Hi everybody, I'm with Dan Sweeney, centre back for Forest Green Rovers. So you're known as one of the toughest guys in the team, one of the tougher guys in the league, but if you don't mind talking about it, have you ever been affected by any struggles in, in your career and how does it affect football mental health? Yeah, you know, like it, uh, I said, like playing football's a privilege and it really is, you know, because I've, I've sort of been on the other side of life where I've had to, I've had to work and stuff, you know. Um, yeah, I've had some had some like tough times, you know. Like I was on a building site for three or four years before I actually made it in the in the pro game. You know, I was I was 18. I was well, I was at Wimbledon. Well, no, before that, I was actually um, playing non-league football when I was 16. Um, but then having to work alongside it, so I was working on the building site of my uncle. Um, but yeah, some some real tough times there. Like, and you know, that's that's why I understand the other side of life and. How much of a privilege it is to be a footballer, you know, how and how lucky we are. I signed for Barnet when I was 21, and yeah, that was like the, the start of my Barnet career was a real struggle. Um, I sort of signed in January, January the first, and play, and come on for half an hour against Plymouth, who were top of the league at the time, and we won one nil. I'd done really well, and from there, I um, I didn't didn't play. I think I made one more sub appearance that season in April. And I, I didn't play, so sort of like come the summertime, I said to the manager, I said like, well, what's um, what's going on? Am I am I going to have a chance? Am I, am I not going to have a chance? You know, because I, I really wanted to play. And um, he said, no, you, you can have a chance. Like everyone's got a fresh start this season and stuff. And you know, and, and I came came back in pre-season like hungry, strong, fit. I was ready. I was ready to go. And I'd done really well in pre-season again. I like, thought I had a chance, and then a day before the day before the season started on that Saturday, I think um, he told me I can leave. So, so yeah, that really that really hit me. It hit me again. So um, I, I, I sort of stuck with it, and you know, I, I was that was a real tough time for me that in, in football there because I was, I was coming in with two other lads from the first team, and we was coming in at two o'clock every day to train with the youth team or to train on our own. Sometimes we were trained on our own, like just three of us trained on our own at two o'clock in the afternoon. Because that's what we got told to do. Um, I was there for Barnet three and a half years and I think I had like eight or nine managers coming in at, at the time and it was just a bit of a confusing time and it was a tough, tough place to be at, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it was, it was tough. It was, it was hard at the, at the start. Really, really tough for that first sort of year. Well, I signed in January and sort of made three or four appearances till Christmas and it was it was a tough tough time you know like you know I was going home and, and just I was not really much I just didn't really want to play football anymore um, I wasn't myself because you know I really really do appreciate being a professional footballer and working working so hard every single day to better myself and be the best that I can be and, and it wasn't me going home and thinking I just don't want to do this anymore sort of thing I just don't want to play anymore I just I, I was happy to just sort of let it go and because I because I worked so hard, as I said, worked so hard to get there, and it just, for whatever reason, hadn't it wasn't happening. I was being treated really badly. So how did you manage to get out of the hole of obviously playing three times? You had different managers all that time. How did you manage to keep yourself in a decent enough headspace to mm. keep training hard? And then you obviously got player of the season twice at Barnet, and you've got a really good move here, and you're playing so well here. So how did you manage to flip the switch and kind of keep going throughout time? Because a lot of people, like you said, would just want to give up. Yeah. And so how did you manage to keep that going? I think I go back to the, the time where <laughs> I spoke about obviously being in like digging holes and stuff like that. I remember one morning I was like, we was uh, working working on a house. We was building a house at the time. It's just me, and my uncle, and someone else. Um, and we was digging the footing. We dug the footings previously the night before, like six, seven feet in the ground with a digger and stuff. How you'd normally do it and that, and then next morning came and it was quarter past seven in the morning and it was pouring it was it was torrential rain um, and the footing had collapsed so we dug seven feet in the floor what we'd done obviously the night before and the footing collapsed and um, and uh, yeah so dug, dug the trenches and then he said to me here you go there's a shovel get in there so I remember it being freezing cold. It was around January, February time. It was freezing cold. It was raining. I was soaking. But he said, "Get in there and dig it out." So I was in the, the you know six foot trench, digging, digging, the, digging it out, trying to get out the shovel. And it was clay. It was muddy, and it was just coming up to my knees. And it was 
was a bad time, bad time. But that just, that, that stuck with me, no matter where I go, that stuck with me. And for them hard times, I think about times like that as well, where, where I was doing that and what I'm doing now, you know, as, as a football obviously wasn't enjoying it, but, you know, I could have been, I think I could have been even worse off doing, doing that stuff. So that just kept, kept me driven and kept me motivated, you know, so I could never, ever give up and I won't ever give up. That's why I work every single day as hard as I can work to be the best I can be and better myself every single day because that moment will always stick with me, you know, and yeah, it was tough. And, you know, the, the, the time when I was coming at two o'clock training with the youth team, that was just as tough. You know, them times there have just got to stick with you. You just got to keep yourself driven and motivated. So when you have those experiences, how, how can you help the team going forward? Like, obviously you were a captain, so you, you went through all of that. And how can you teach the boys um, that you can go through whatever you're going through because of what you went through? Yeah, it's tough. You know, we, we, have, we have bad times when we're losing in a game or with, with, with fights. Because, you know, like I talk about us being such a tight-knit group. And we really are. We re there's no... There's no no, no one's a bad, there's no bad eggs. Everyone loves each other in this change room. We do, we, we die for each other. And when times aren't going, aren't going the way we want it to go, or there are tough times and we, we have hurdles to jump, then you know, I'm there, I'm motivating the boys every single time. I'm, I'm trying to tell them, even when I'm injured, I'm in the change room trying to tell them what we can do and you know, helping them through it, helping them stay motivated and helping them stay driven to, you know, because I know that this group can achieve something really special. And you know, if we all stick together and keep and keep fighting for each other and keep going, you know, I'm, I'm sure that won't be a problem. So you talked about injuries there. I was someone, as my people that are watching this would know, I went for an injury that took me out of my sport for like two or three years. So you obviously had an injury last season. How do how do players? How do you keep yourself occupied and keep yourself dri mentally driven to go through those hard times when you're going through an injury and you don't know? Maybe you don't know when you're coming back. Yeah. Yeah, again, that's like uh, that was that was awful um, last year. So I so I did like a grade two um, tear on my PCL, which is which is it's not great at all. Um, and I had a grade two on my MCL. Um, so yeah, I, I hit a tackle and then fell awkwardly, and you know, and, and it happened. And you know, I went to see the specialist and stuff, and he said, "Well, look, you, your season's finished." I think I can't remember what time it was. I've done it. But he, he said your season's sort of done. It might have been sort of March, uh, January, February time. As your season's finished, you're going to be out for like five, five and a half months or something. And you know, it just it just broke me, broke me. I went, I went home and cried. Then I was really, really upset because you know, as a, as a, as you know, I wanted to be really involved with the team and and um, in and around the boys. Um, but it was it was it was tough, you know, to be told you're out for five months, five and a half months, and you're going to miss the rest of the season when we were doing so well as well and, and, and I was just told I'm not going to be a part of it anymore. It was, it, was, it was tough, it was really hard. You know, but it's just, you know, you have to, I don't know, it's, you have to find something within yourself to, to stay, to say that you're going to be back and, and you're going to fight this and you're going to, you're going to overcome it and you're going to, you're going to do it. Um, and you know, that's, that's what I did. I, I, I was in the gym every single day. With the physios, you know, with Graymo, with Tom, our sports scientists, um, working every single day to try and get myself back, you know. And, and in the end, I think it was, it was just over three months I was back. You know, I was back for the playoff semi-final. Um, was unlucky again in that game. Um, but yeah, it's, you just got to dig deep. You just said there like, how great everyone is here and, and I just want to talk about modern day dressing rooms because maybe in the past mental health has been a bit of a stigma, obviously we're talking about it more which is, yeah. which is great. So what, yeah. what are modern day dressing rooms like around the whole subject of mental health when maybe some of the boys are going through tougher times? They are, it's, it, I think it's, it's, it's better that it's out there now because you know maybe it's a bit, a bit scared to speak about it before or sometimes maybe you know and it's great that people are coming forth and speaking about it you know and I think it's good here that uh, no matter what problems you have or whoever whoever has problems or something, you could probably speak to anybody in the change room yeah. about it. You know, staff included as well. You could probably speak to anybody about it, and, and they would lend you a helping hand. You know, if anyone's going through any problems or anything, all, you, all you'd have to do is ask. Especially in in, in this group, you know, I, there's a few times that the boys have had problems. I've had problems as well. A few times the boys, you know, you just. Had a chat with a few of the lads, and they've they've either, they've either come up with a solution for it or like done something to help each other out. You know, staff. You know, I've just obviously had an injury now, and you know the gaffers come up to me and said, and all the boys, to be fair, the gaffers come up to me and said like, um, 
anything you need, you don't hesitate to ask. He's always constantly asking if I'm all right and stuff, and need need to get the support that I need, you know. And and, and it's the same for all the boys. You know, Dokes, one of the lads, broke his collarbone um, a while back. You know, we was all there for him, and, and if anything that he needed, we we were there. You know. Yeah. So how so how does that help with obviously you spoke out on tight the tight the group? Is do you reckon that's why you're doing so well this season? You can go to anyone, and that's why your 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 bonds are so good that that's why you're succeeding and looking like you're gonna have a great season ahead. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, I think that's got a, a, a massive part to play. You know, I, I think that goes like sort of under the radar a little bit sometimes, and teams go, yeah, we'll sign this player, we'll sign that player, and get yeah, they're great players. But we don't know if they have that team cohesion. So I think we have we have both. We're, we're lucky to have both sit here. So we've got we've got very very talented players, and we've also the the tightest group that I've ever seen. You know, we as soon as we cross that white line out there, we like our game faces are on and, and we're ready to work with us in training or the game or what. But as soon as we come off it, we're like we're like best mates. We're always having a bit of banter and a good laugh together. And as I said, like any, any problems that anyone has, then. Uh, they're not actually problems because we can try and resolve them together, you know. And you know that that player beside you in the change room will die for the other player next to him. I want to finish on the subject of social media. Obviously, social media can be a good place to promote some good things like the content, like that we're trying to make today. But it can also be a very toxic environment. Yeah. How do how do you deal with some of maybe the trolls out there or anyone that's trying to put you down? You know, I, uh, it's different for other people, but because I think. For me, for me, it's it, it's one I'm quite I'm quite mentally quite strong sometimes. Um, but I know some of the other lads have, have had problems with it. But it's not it's not great. And I try to I just try to block it out and don't take anything like too seriously on social media. You know because I just I don't agree with a lot of things most people say on it, um, especially if it's if it's bad. Um, you know, but it, it, I think it's just a case of ignoring it. But I think. Especially with like mental health and and the topic of racism as well. I think I think that social media platforms do need to be doing more yeah. into stop into stopping things like that because some of the things that I've seen or read uh, have been awful and horrendous, you know. And, and you know we talk about racism, but it's just the same for mental health as well, you know, because you don't you don't know what people are going through and and there's some nasty comments out there that are just completely uncalled for. Exactly. It doesn't need to happen, but. I do, yeah, I, I agree with what most people say that social media platforms need to do more to try and stop stop what people are saying. That was yeah. exactly what I was going to ask. Do you, do you have any ideas of what, what you reckon they could do or, or is it just...? Yeah, I, I, I don't know, it's, that's, that's, that's a tough one. Um, I, yeah, I don't know, they just, I don't I think they could, you know, they, they've got to have something where they where they can sort of see, or someone can see what's being said, or they can block comments, certain things yeah. being said and stuff, you know, because at the end of the day, listen, we're all, we're, all, we're all here to do a job. No one wants to do a bad job or anything like that. And you don't, we don't, some people don't need the comments that, that, that they receive, you know, it's not, it's not nice. You know, I, I know my brother won't mind me saying it, but my brother per, like personally was speaking to him he had to delete his, his Twitter account one time because, you know, I think he had a couple of bad games or whatever. And, you know, he was just the fans were, or not necessarily the fans, the fans and, and other people were were just absolutely hammering him and saying like nasty things to him, like stuff, some things like about his family and stuff, like me, you know, and like, it's not, it's not nice. Like, we don't, we don't, we don't want to, we don't want to play badly or we don't want to like underperform. It's, that's our lives. Like, that's what we do it for. We really, really want to, but. You know, it's, it is it is very very uncalled for. You know, and I think I think some people think that like sports people are robots, and we're not. We're like we're human beings. You know, so. Yeah. Well, that's, I agree with everything there, and there needs to be a lot more protection for athletes because obviously yeah. you're in the you're in the spectacle. You're everyone can you're in on TV sometimes, and, and you're playing football for everyone to see, and, and it's so easy for people to just comment and and put throw hate towards people, and especially young athletes that are looking up and and are trying to get in trying to get to professional level and stuff. So what do you reckon, what's your advice for some younger athletes that are maybe going through some tougher times, maybe as 14, 15 year olds that are looking to to make the next step but are really struggling? Do you have any advice for some of them? them? Yeah, I just, listen, s stick with it, you know, because like there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things out there that say you need to make it at this age, you need to make it at that age, you know. I know, I know some people that didn't make it as a professional until they're 28. I know, listen, I know everyone wants to make it as early as possible, you know, I didn't make it well, 
I didn't make it till I was 21, really, 22, you know. I played, started playing when I was 22 and, you know, but listen, just stick with it. Find something in yourself that's going to motivate you and drive you to be the best you can be and, and work as hard as you can every single day to make sure you have the best chance of becoming the best you can be, you know. Um, and if you are struggling with, with things, listen, there's, 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 you can go out there and speak to people, you know, there's no harm in speaking about your problems or anything like that, you know. Thank you very much, that was perfect. Right. Nice to see you.